yes hello and welcome back uh, in my first video uh, i have explained you a uh, theory of demand where we have seen some basic concepts let us quickly revise and then we will continue further with the topic uh, we have seen what is the definition of a demand we have gone through the definition of a demand where i told there are three important keywords in this definition uh, purchasing power price and time after this we have uh, seen uh, another topic where we have discussed about types of demand like individual demand uh, market demand i told individual demand is the demand made by a single individual unit it may be a firm it may be a single person or uh, like this market demand we have i told that market demand is nothing but market demand is a sum total of the individual demand you have seen this also uh, types of some more types we have discussed like joint demand derived demand demand for a labor is called derived demand composite demand and so on uh, direct demand and competitive demand just after uh, having a discussion on this topic that is types of demand we have gone to the further topic where we have discussed about uh, factors affecting individual demand in this we have uh, we have discussed about uh, price as one of the important factor that affect demand income of the consumer uh, is the second important factor that affect demand uh, the relation between income and demand is actually determined from the nature of the commodity if it is a normal commodity income and demand is di uh, directly related if it is inferior commodity income and demand is inversely related and in case of in inexpensive good of necessity uh, we have seen that uh, up to a certain level when income increases demand also increases but after uh, some point of time with further increase in income demand does not increase so these are the uh, determinant that we have discussed consumer test and preference i hope you remember we have discussed about uh, consumers addictions uh, towards the smoking or uh, uh, alcohol uh, that is uh, even if the price changes the demand does not changes and of course the fourth uh, determinant that we have discussed in the first video is the price of the related good where substitute good and complementary good is discussed uh, if i if i'm if i remember then uh, i have given you one example where i told that if the price of petrol will increase the demand for private vehicles uh, go down uh, and the public and the people uh, shift their preference from private to the public transportation so these are the determinant that we have uh, discussed uh, uh, for individual demand uh, two more that is consumer expectation about future price and consumer credit facility just after this we have seen a complete new topic where we have discussed about determinants of market demand uh, uh, for uh, one one thing that i want to highlight here or note that determinant of individual demand and determinants of market demand are two di different topic you can see here we have discussed about determinant of market demand where i told that population is one of the important determinant nature of the population that if the nature if the population uh, consists uh, of uh, more of children then there will be a uh, there will be a demand for toys uh, the in the market because uh, the, these are the commodities that is used by children and if the population consists of female then there will be a more demand for cosmetics uh, and sarees or the uh, things that is used by uh, female similarly season and weather we have discussed government policy and distribution of income so these are the four important determinant that affect the market demand okay moving on further uh, we have also discussed this uh, slide where i told you what is demand function it is nothing but a functional relationship between quantity demand and the factors affecting demand uh, demand schedule. I re I remember I told that schedule is a tabular presentation where we show the informations regarding the price and the quantity demand at various price. What what are the quantity demanded? That is what when represented in a form of a table we say it is a demand schedule. So there are two types of demand schedule: individual demand schedule and market demand schedule. As you can see here on the screen, uh, market demand schedule. Uh, this is also we have uh, discussed. So I am not uh, going in elaboration. Let us uh, move further. Law of demand, as I told, that it was explained given by Alfred Marshall, and it is nothing but it shows the inverse relation between price and demand. It is shown with the help of the arrow mark here. You can see that when price is rising, demand falls, and when price falls, demand increases. So this is uh, called law of demand. The statement of the law of demand is here, where one very important word to mention in the law of demand is ceteris paribus that is all other factors affecting demand other than price remain constant okay so 
demand curve this is also we have discussed uh, in my first video i have told you what is demand curve and uh, two types of demand curve that we generally see that is individual demand curve and market demand curve uh, then we have uh, gone to a this was the last uh, slide that we have discussed in the first video where uh, i was trying to explain you the reason for the downward sloping of the demand curve or i may say that is the reason for the inverse relation between price and quantity demand you can see here we have discussed about uh, law of diminishing marginal utility i told that uh, we are going to have a, a complete discussion on this topic that is utility and or and marginal utility in the next chapter theory of consumer behavior uh, income effect, I told that how income effect is responsible for uh, inverse relation between price and quantity demand by introducing a new concept that is real income. Uh, one example is given uh, that explain uh, us very clearly that how uh, consumers uh, increases its demand for uh, milk when the price of milk reduces from rupees 50 to rupees 40. Then we have discussed substitution effect, a third reason that is being explained to uh, support that price and quantity demand is inversely related. In case of substitution effect, we have taken the example of a substitute goods like tea and coffee and I, uh, I have explained uh, that when price of coffee increases, the demand for tea will also increase because the people are going to shift their preference from coffee to tea. And so this, this show that uh, price and demand are uh, inversely related. So today we will continue from here and we will see that what else we can uh, see in this topic. So if you look here then there are certain uh, some more uh, two more reason that is being explained uh, in your book to uh, give a reason that why the demand curve is downward sloping or why, there, why the price and quantity are inversely related. Uh, increase in the number of consumer. Just have a look. I'll, I'll read this so that uh, we can have a, a discussion on this topic that uh, how increase in number of consumer is responsible for downward sloping of the demand curve. When price of a commodity fall a little, uh, fall a little, people with moderate income will also be able to purchase that commodity. At still lower prices, even the poor person will be able to afford it. Therefore, the demand for the commodity will increase. Okay, so it's very simple. We can uh, say like this, that is when price of uh, any commodity fall, earlier the people, those who could not afford that commodity because of its high price, now able to afford it. And hence what we see that uh, the demand for the commodity in the market increases. So this shows that when price fall, even a poor person or a people from the middle class can afford the commodity and hence the quantity demand in the market increases okay moving on to the next point that is several uses of the commodity again this is an important reason to explain the inverse relation between price and quantity demand uh, or i may say like this that uh, more or less this is a case of a composite demand do you remember in the first video we have discussed about composite uh, demand where we have discussed about types of demand i can show you uh, I hope uh, we have discussed here that is composite demand. Let me show you composite uh, demand where we were discussing about types of demand. Uh, yes, this, this is where uh, I have told you that is you can see here composite demand that is the demand for those commodity which have several uses. So basically the idea, idea is like this that uh, the idea is like this that uh, in case of uh, uh, how several use of a commodity is responsible for price and quantity inverse relationship is this that when the price of any such good that have a several uses like electricity and milk because milk can be used for uh, drinking purpose milk can be used for making sweets milk can be used for making curds and many many other things similarly electricity can be used for lighting purpose electricity can be used for cooking electricity can be used in farms and the factories for productions so therefore these commodity have several use so what happened when the price of these commodity increase the consumer become very uh, the consumer become very alert and they put this commodity only to the urgent need the un urgent that is the uh, of course when a price of electricity increases what we see that electricity is only used for uh, lighting purpose it is not used for cooking purpose so therefore the quantity demand for the electricity fall when the price of electricity increases so it shows the inverse relation between price and demand so these are the two more uh, reason that is being told to explain that why price and demand is inversely related okay moving on to the fresh topic that uh, we'll uh, discuss here uh, 
many a time we say uh, always according to the law of demand we say that price and demand is inversely related but this price and demand inverse relation does not exist always there are some cases where we see that price and demand are directly related or it is just opposite oppositely related if you look into the uh, into the slide then you are going to find that three cases i have taken in this slide that will explain that the law of demand does not uh, is not valid in all situation where the first case uh, is a case of a giffen good that is uh, this concept was given by uh, sir robert giffen and in this uh, he is trying to explain the concept uh, he is trying to explain the exception in a manner uh, he has taken an example uh, i can go through the we will we'll first go through the example and then i'll explain you this point in this uh, in this example you can see here example as the price of the maize fall real income of the consumer increases and hence he can afford to purchase superior goods like rice and wheat okay what is this given good uh, we generally say that the given goods are the inferior inferior goods so when the price of uh, price of any inferior good fall uh, the consumer now can save more money uh, from uh, more, more money by buying the same quantity of that good or what he can do with the save part he can purchase superior quality of good and hence we see that the price and the demand is not uh, inversely related rather it is directly related okay let us let us take one uh, example uh, if i take one example it it may happen like this that uh, uh, a consumer is there who is consuming uh, two goods let us let us take the goods as uh, bread and uh, meat so what happened when the price of bread will go down then consumer is able to save some part of his income so he can use that save, saving part to purchase meat instead of buying more of breads so when price of bread is going down the consumer is not buying more of breads but he is he is using that save save part of the money to buy uh, meat so what happened the demand for the bread is uh, not uh, increasing rather uh, it it is uh, lowering down because consumer is uh, consumer wish to buy a superior quality of good than uh, that is meat here in the in our example so we find that the price and demand does a uh, relationship does not exist here if you look into the second uh, point that is prestigious good which is also known as snob effect or sometimes we say article of distinction uh, this is again a uh, exception to the law of demand in this uh, why we say that this is an exception to the law of demand because uh, there are many people in the society uh, uh, whose uh, desireness uh, of uh, display is very high uh, what do i mean by desireness of display is very high uh, they used to buy uh, those commodity in the market that have a high price or high value just to show that they are different from the society or uh, they buy those commodity which is a symbol of uh, status so that is why we see that uh, in this situation we see when the price of uh, such commodity increases the consumer the buy more of it uh, just to show that they are different from other in the society so this is again an exceptions where we find when the price is rising uh, the uh, demand is also rising you can uh, look here one example i have given uh, example that is rich woman would like to buy diamond simply because its price is high a fall in their price may lead may lead the rich people to buy less because now the rich men desire for display is not satisfied so this point explain us that why this is an exception to the law of demand okay coming on to the uh, third uh, point that explain exceptions to the law of demand you can look here uh, that is called expectation regarding future price okay let us let us have a discussion like this uh, given i'll give you one example to explain this point imagine if the price of any commodity increases let us take the example of petrol so if when the price of petrol will rise and if the people expect that the price of petrol is going to rise further in the future the people the people or the consumer are go, uh, going to behave like this that they will buy more of that commodity in the present to save in the future so what is what is happening here when the price of petrol is rising and the people are expecting that the price will further rise in the future they are buying more of the commodity in the present so the price is rising in the present and at the same time the demand is also rising in the present so that shows 
a little different from what law of demand is explaining so what we see here the price rise the demand also rise so their price and demand is moving in the same direction and hey and so we say that uh, expectation regarding future price is a exception to the law of demand uh, we can uh, have uh, we, uh, we can say like this also that when the price of petrol fall and the people expect that the price of the petrol is further going to rise uh, further going to fall in the future they will hold their demand they are not going to demand in the present they will wait for the future uh, for the price to fall and hence they will buy so what we see, uh, see here also again when the price is falling the demand also falls so this this is why we say that it is an exception to law of demand so uh, i have explained you three point where given good is being told that how given good is an exception to law of demand uh, snob effect that is also known as article of distinction or prestigious good is also an exception exception to the law of demand and expectation regarding future price is a third exception to the law of demand so we will move further uh, where we will see some more cases uh, where we will discuss about except exception to the law of demand let us move and see some more situations okay emergency that is a uh, again one of a very important point uh, that uh, exceptions to the law of uh, exception to the law of demand and of course uh, uh, we know that uh, we are in the situations where uh, coronavirus is affecting the entire world so this is a time of emergency how emergency is an exception to the law of demand or we can take a real life example where i will explain you with a small example to explain that how emergency situation can be a uh, exceptions to the law of demand that is price and demand relationship does not follow during the time of emergency in this time during uh, when this coronavirus is is spreading all throughout the world what we find the supply of the commodity has reduced a lot but the demand is uh, remain demand has remained same or we are in a need of more of the commodities uh, so that uh, we have the commodities available in our in our home so what we find that even if the shopkeeper uh, ask for more prices we do not bother about it we buy the commodity because we know that if uh, if a time will come when there will be no good available in the economy then also uh, we have to consume so we are ready to pay any price in the present so as to acquire the commodity so emergency situation is of course a situation where we see that the price of the commodity rises up and with rise in the price the demand does not fall instead the demand increases because people want to save commodities for uh, future use so uh, yes of course so war war is a, another emergency situation where the law of demand does not follow famine is a, again one of a in uh, emergency situation where we see that the law of demand does not follow so emergency is a exception to the law of demand okay coming on to the next point you can see here that is we have we are discussing about weblin effect how weblin effect is uh, uh, is an exception to the law of demand it was given in the name of uh, uh, Thorsten Veblen where uh, we see that uh, there are some consumers uh, who judge the uh, quality of the commodity by its price that is what actually called uh, Veblen effect so we see that sometime we see that there are some people uh, who uh, feel that when the price of any commodity increase the quality of that commodity has also improved and hence they go to the market to buy more of it so the, uh, this is again an exception to the law of demand where we see that when the price has increased the quantity demand is also increased uh, believing that the quality of the commodity has improved there are some people who uh, judge the quality by by its price so this is again an exception to the law of demand okay coming on to the third point in the slide you can see here change in the fashion that is also an exception uh, it is written that when a commodity goes out of fashion consumer will not purchase a large quantity of this commodity even when its price is reduced okay so what is this uh, we can have a uh, some more examples to uh, discuss this uh, that how change in fashion is an exception to the law of demand in the present time uh, we never see any uh, hero wearing uh, bell bottom pants or uh, the pants which were used to uh, the trousers that were used to own by uh, the uh, 90s uh, heroes or 80s 90s heroes right 
so what we see that uh, change in fashion uh, it simply means that when when there is a change in fashion when the uh, even when and when there is a uh, shift in the fashion that is uh, from uh, traditional to the modern traditional dresses modern dresses this is what actually the change in fashion so even if the price of these uh, dresses that is that were used by the people in 80s and 90s if the price of these uh, dresses goes down we never find that the consumer demand more more of that commodity because that is not in the fashion and hence we say that price and uh, demand relationship the inverse relationship does not follow in this situation okay and coming on to the last point that is uh, share market uh, of course uh, i'll not go much into the detail of it but uh, i'll say that share market is a uh, exceptions to the law of demand what happened in the share market share in share market when the price uh, when the demand uh, for or the, when the price of any share go down its demand also fall and when the price of any share goes up the demand also uh, increases so this show that the price and demand of the share is directly related to each other so that is that is how we can say that a share market is a another exceptions where the law of demand does not follow okay so let's have a quick look what are the points that we have discussed in the exception so we have discussed about giffen good uh, that was given by sir robert giffen and uh, giffen good is an exception to the law of demand we have discussed about prestigious good snob effect and article of distinction that is also an exception to the law of demand expectation regarding future price uh, we have discussed about this also then we have discussed about emergency that uh, emergency is a uh, exception we see that when the during the time of emergency there is a shortage of good and hence when uh, even if the price is high we buy more of the commodity uh, Weblin effect as I told that the price quality relationship so when uh, price increase people believe that the quality of the commodity has improved and they buy more of it so this is an exception to the law of demand change in fashion and finally the share market uh, is also an exception to law of demand. Okay, so we'll move on to the fresh topic here. Uh, the last we are left with two more topics in this chapter where we will discuss about uh, difference between movement along the demand curve and shift of the demand curve. So these are the two important topic and uh, generally the question comes in section B. This is a six marks question that uh, comes like uh, what is the difference between movement along the demand curve or uh, shift of the demand curve or sometimes the question comes like this that uh, distinguish between expansion uh, expansion and uh, increase so you can look here uh, the word expansion and contraction is mentioned here i'll tell you what is this expansion and contraction and here it is written increase and decrease that is a shift in the demand curve under, under the topic of shift in the demand curve we see increase and decrease so we'll we'll have a discussion so let us first uh, try to understand what is movement along the demand curve or uh, of course one more thing that is uh, you can you can see here when we are telling movement uh, along the demand curve we also say movement along the demand curve as change in quantity demand but when we are telling shift in the demand curve we say it is nothing but it is change in demand so if you look into the two two slide then you're going to find that here the word quantity is additionally used but here the word quantity is missing so when when we say that distinguish or when a question comes that distinguish between change in quantity demand and change in demand it simply means that you have to distinguish between movement along the demand curve and uh, shift along the demand curve okay let us let us try to understand what are the what are these two uh, cases Okay, so this movement along the demand curve, uh, if I'm talking about, then we say like this, that movement along the demand curve is nothing, but it is a change in the quantity demand due to change in price when all other uh, determinants of demand remain constant. So if we assume other determinants to remain constant and if the price of that commodity changes, we find that the quantity demand of that commodity by the consumer also changes. When this is represented with the help of when we represent this in the uh, diagram, then we can understand this in a better way. You can look here uh, in the graph that is being uh, given here. You can see that when the suppose, for example, let us take the first situation where the consumer is at point A on the demand curve. This is point A. Uh, and at this point, the price of the commodity was P and the quantity demand of the commodity was Q. So what happened if the price of the commodity uh, go up, if, if the price of the commodity go up from P to P2, then we find the quantity demand of that commodity by a consumer reduced from Q to Q2. 
So this is nothing. So due to the rise in the price, there is a contraction in demand. That is lowering of the demand, lowering of the quantity demand is called contraction in demand. So with rise in price, quantity demand fall. Similarly, if you look uh, again, so suppose if the consumer is at point A and with fall in price from P to P1, we see that the quantity demanded by the consumer will increase from Q to Q1 following the law of demand. So the consumer, uh, so with fall in the price, the quantity demanded by the consumer increases. This is called expansion in expansion to the demand curve. So to be simple, when we move upward along the demand curve, we say it is a situation of contraction. And when we move downward along the demand curve, we say it is a case of contraction. So this is what actually expansion and contraction means. Remember, I told that uh, movement along the demand curve or expansion and contraction is a case where we see that only the price of the commodity changes. Other factor does not change. Other factor we assume to remain same. So this is a case of movement along the demand curve and the two situation within it that is expansion and contraction. Expansion means uh, increase in the quantity demand due to lowering of the price and contraction means uh, lowering of the quantity demand due to increase in price okay so we'll go further we'll see that what is shift in demand because we have to distinguish between uh, change in demand and change in quantity demand and change in demand if you look here uh, then shift in demand is nothing but we say that when the quantity demand demand by the consumer changes due to the change in factor other than price so to, to be very simple or to be elaborate, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say that when the price of the commodity does not change, it remains same, but other factor like income, uh, advertisement, weather and condition, if these factors that affect the demand change, then we find that there is a change in quantity demand. This is a case of shift in uh, demand. This is also known as change in demand. You can see in the diagram below, there are, there are two types of shift that is increase in demand and decrease in demand. Let us uh, explain the case of shift in demand with the help of this uh, diagram. That is uh, a graph that I have uh, draw, drawn here. You can look here. Imagine that if the price, uh, if this is my initial demand curve D, if this is the initial demand curve D and at this, the price of the commodity was P and at that time, the quantity demand is Q. So when I'm, when I'm on the demand curve this, my price is P and the quantity demand is D. So let it be uh, any commodity, say, uh, let it be a commodity like milk or any other commodity. So when the income of a consumer increase, when the income of the consumer increase, the price does not change. The price of the commodity remains same. Generally, what we expect, the consumer are going to demand more of it. So you can see what will happen to the demand curve. This demand curve D is going to shift upward to a new position called D1. So this is now my new demand curve due to increase in demand. And at the same price P, the consumer is now demanding more of the commodity that is quantity Q1. So this show that when income of the consumer increase, the demand curve shift uh, upward to the new position D1. And uh, due to this shift, we see at the same price, the consumer demand more of this. This is a case what called increase in demand. So the upward shift of the demand curve or rightward shift of the demand curve is a case of increase in demand. Uh, talking oppositely, that if you look look here, that is when uh, if the suppose now now if I take a if I, if I say that if income of the consumer fall, so when income of the consumer fall, the demand the demand curve will shift uh, downward, that is towards the left leftward, and this is the new demand curve that is D2 at the same price P because price is not changing. Uh, in case of shift in demand, I told one of the very important condition is the price remains same. So at the same price P, now the consumer can afford quantity Q2. So that shows that the quantity demanded has reduced from Q2 to Q2. Uh, so this is a case. So due to the fall in the income, the quantity demand has reduced. So this is a case of decrease in demand. So we can say like this, that decrease in demand is a situation where, where due to the fall in the income or the other uh, factors other than price, the demand curve 
of shift leftward and due to the leftward shift the quantity demand reduces so that is what actually increase and decrease in demand i hope you have understood the difference between movement along the demand uh, that is also called change in quantity demand and shift in the dem uh, demand curve that is a case of increase increase and decrease so this is what we uh, have uh, in this chapter so thank you for being with me uh, so let us quickly have a look what are the topics that we have seen so that uh, uh, we remember the things that we are we are uh, we need to learn so one of the first topic is meaning of demand we have to go through it properly types of demand we have to go through it properly difference between uh, the various types like dis distinguish between joint demand derived demand composite demand give one example of a derived demand so the questions may be uh, varieties uh, i'm just uh, we will take 2 minute to have discussions on some questions like uh, de define direct demand what is the difference between direct demand and competitive demand what are the factors that affect demand how income is a uh, how income is a uh, factor affecting demand then uh, these are the determinants of demand that we have discussed determinant of market demand also dis we have discussed i told that uh, determinant of uh, individual demand and determinants of market demand are two different uh, topic demand function a very important question that comes generally in the section a that define demand function and represent it with the help of an equation okay demand schedule this is also we have discussed individual demand schedule and market demand schedule basically uh, the question comes like this that distinguish between individual demand schedule and market demand schedule law of demand one of a very important question again uh, who has given the law of demand and what is a law of demand so this is again one of one question distinguish between individual demand and market demand that is again one more question that we see here reason for downward sloping one most important topic in this chapter that is what are the reasons uh, why the demand curve is downward sloping then uh, we have some exceptions that is uh, again a question that comes in section b that uh, discuss some exceptions to the law of demand where you can discuss about given good uh, expectation about uh, future price prestigious good emergency situation weblin effect change in fashion and share market and finally we come to the part where we uh, will uh, the most important question that distinguish between movement along the demand curve and shift along the demand curve okay thank you